because I'm going to keep this under five minutes, I'm going to have to skip a lot of the information. If you want all of that, go to the 55 minute video. I will explain all the terms. I'll uh, give you more examples, cover a bunch of different topics you might be interested in, like fasting, uh, cold therapy, saunas, different types of strength training, etc. Okay, but for now, here's the quick version of my bulletproof BS detector. Step number one, you have to look at this spectrum I've created and just to determine where you fall on it personally. I can't tell you which end is better. Generally, people in the purple are wrong less often, but you may identify more with the red end of the spectrum, or you may identify with the blue end of the spectrum. It doesn't necessarily matter because there's strength and weaknesses to both sides and also being the middle. You just have to understand where you're at. Me personally, I'm about right here. So keep this in mind as we go through my BS detectors. That's how I'm generally filtering things. I'm a little more conservative, but not all the way to the end. So here's how this BS detector actually works. What you're trying to do is determine the truthiness of something. Thank you, Stephen Colbert. Like the, like the continuum I put in the bottom there. Just two slides in a row, two different spectrums, sorry. But something in the green would be as true as something like one plus one equals two. All right, so if something is over there, you're 100% as confident as you could ever get that something is true. The other end of the spectrum is something that is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard. There is zero chance it's ever possibly true. So all you're doing with BS detection is trying to figure out where whatever topic you're interested in lies on this. All the way green, all the way brown, or is it somewhere in the middle? So here's how I do that and figure out where something lands. Uh, I kind of view it as like 10 different categories of evidence. Now, before I get too further, I don't literally physically do this. I'm just filtering information constantly and I'm adjusting where things land on the spectrum when new information comes in. Okay, so I have about 10 different types of evidence uh, that I consider. Once I do that, I go through the strength of each and give it a, basically a mental score of one to 10. So 10 types, one to 10 score, it's a 100 point scoring system. Then I make a mental spider or radar plot and then the strength of my conviction is based on the strength of the evidence, roughly. Okay, so something that has a score of 100 out of 100 is going to be very green. Something with a score of 20 out of 100 is probably going to be that yellowish brown. Not always, doesn't always work like that, but that's basically the system. So I'll give you one example here of what this might look like. So I've plotted all 10 of my evidence categories, and I'll go through three different examples to show you how this could work. So example number one, may look like something like that. And I may say, hey, there's really limited information and anecdotes and experts aren't enjoying it, but there's some maybe acute mechanistic and molecular or cell research. So maybe this isn't a real thing, but you're just over-interpreting cell culture research or some molecular signaling pathway. All right? A different concept could look something like this. A lot of evidence in the anecdote and from the experiments, but there's basically no science. There's no intervention studies doesn't make any teleological sense, doesn't make any natural sense. And so I'd probably say this here. It's not worth my time yet. Now, this is not a case of something being brown. This is something yellow. Not worth my time yet, but I'm paying attention. Maybe as the science evolves and continues and it changes, I'll change where it is in the spectrum. So this is far from a brown, but just like the, the previous one wasn't a green either because it had a lot more points. I still had some reservations there and thought it was probably being overinterpreted. And then you can compare this to the, the fuchsia, pinkish, whatever the hell color this thing is. And you can see it's getting points pretty much across the board there. Now it's not perfect, it's not 100 out of 100, but I would probably at this point say, all right, it works. People are trying it, saying it works. My instincts say it works. It makes natural teleological sense. There's good training data on it. There's long-term data on it. There's intervention when you give it to people, it has an acute effect. It probably works. Of course, I'm going to continue to pay attention to the research, but this is probably getting pretty green in my eyes. So that's all I'm really doing, and that's how my system works. Now, a couple of things as we finish up. This is how people trick you. Number one, I mean, anyone can make things up. That's always true, but that's not really a trick. You just have a liar on your hands. But number two and three are the ones that confuse people. So number two here, they don't divulge where they're at on that spectrum. So I'm fine with gurus and hackers and people like that. You just got to tell me that your barrier for being convinced is very, very low. And you run more on instinct and you run more on things like it makes natural sense to you or theological sense. That's fine. Just let me know where you're at. 
there's a difference between your opinion and the evidence. And, and the problem only happens when people conflate the two, right? So if you're just saying, hey, based on your experience in the field or your gut instinct, you think this is a good idea, I'm totally fine with that. Just don't tell me the science is great behind it when it's not, or it's not very expansive. Or same problem if you're on the other end of the spectrum, by the way. Oh, that doesn't work. Why? Because there's not an RCT behind it? I don't, that's not, oh, you're a blue person. Okay, fine. And that, you know, I may have a different level of, of confidence. This kind of leads into number three here, which is we have that mismatch of conviction between evidence and strength. And this is what happens when we create zealots and ideologues, right? So they see one piece of information in one area, and they think the whole world should do that, and there's no other option. And it's not that they're wrong, it doesn't work, but they're way too convinced, uh, and they're not generally helping people because they believe in it too much. And what they're really doing there is they're cherry picking or misrepresenting the well-roundedness of the evidence. So if there's strong anecdotal evidence and there's strong molecular evidence, it's fine to say so. But if it doesn't make any sense anywhere else, you should also acknowledge that part. Hey, there's good evidence here and here, so I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to be something really great. That's very different than saying, oh, this 100% works. You guys are all idiots if you don't believe it. That's the trick, right? It can sound very convincing when they cherry pick which categories to pick from and how many and how deep to go in each category. So you can see a whole bunch of final reminders here that we're not gonna have time to get into, but these are some things you need to consider and read on your own uh, when you go to apply this system. It does actually make a ton of sense. Now I'll go into a lot of these examples or you can Google some of them. But just remember at the very end here, being wrong is totally fine, it's okay. Just don't misrepresent your evidence. That's where people really get pissed for the most part and they feel lied to. Uh, and, Feel like you're trying to cheat them and like i said i do have more examples in the 55 minute version and i'll go through a lot of categories that you might find interesting so hopefully you appreciated this video and this is uh helping you a little bit in the process and for the record if you did enjoy this i know my wife's going to yell at you because it's actually the second take of this video and the first time i said this she got all mad and yelled but what i'd like you to do is, instead of donating to my patreon or sharing this just go ahead and tell miss natasha beck that my appearance looks fine, and the quality of my information is more important than my physical appearance. And she should love me either way, which she probably doesn't anymore because I haven't shaved in weeks. All right, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy.